Forge. These are your leaders. Interestingly, he's given Scraggy a good sniff, and she was the first, I think, the first or the second you to lamb this first. year. First, I think. So she's the first to be served, she might be the first to lamb again. first to be served so in theory if she doesn't repeat she should be the first to land in theory so the breeding harness has got an orange crayon in at the moment so in theory he should have left a little orange mark on flow um, to be honest in this light I can't see if it's worked or not we've never used a breeding harness before we've always used rattle but hopefully it'll work okay if not we'll just have to go back to rattle we're trying to use the crayons this year in the harness because it will yeah, leave it a smaller has. mark. Has. Sid thinks it has, which is great. But it will leave a smaller mark, which will mean the fleeces will be easier for us to process because we obviously um, process our own fleeces. So they're not a waste product to us. They're actually a, a valuable commodity. Okay, so it's Wednesday the 9th of October. Um, we're just going to sort out some more ewes to go to some more rams. We put Forge out with most of the ewes yesterday. So Forge was a Texel ram, so he went out with most of the ewes yesterday. He's a free, I think, so far when I checked him earlier. Uh, so we're just going to sort out the mix of ewes we've got left. We haven't got very many, but they're going to go to a couple of different breeds of ram. So we can well, either breed some pure Shetlands or some Dartmoor crosses which make quite nice ewes actually, or quite nice looking ewes and they've got quite good fleece uh, so we'll give that a go. They're all pretty tame, I think we've had most of these for quite a while. So yeah, you can see they're pretty tame. <laughs> um, right. Okay, so we've just got to sort some ewes out, we've, we've just had to have a little jiggle round so we've got somewhere to put them also, put them in the race move some hogs which are in the shed now put the rams in a just a pen over there quickly uh, so now we just need to split these up then put the rams back to the groups of ewes you see it's actually buffeting down with rain um, and then yeah put the hogs over there and then we're going to go and get dry Bell's having a little exercise so two Eleonora cells, just that one's behind the house. So another one's there, two sisters. Uh, one's got a fold of ear, so she's kind of in spot. She's been a bit nasty to one of her other sisters who just went back to the ball yesterday or the day before. Um, <coughs> not letting her eat really. So we just these should be served already, so we can take them away from Victor and just put them in a pen. Okay, so just checking the sheep this evening, um, and we've just well, I've just found this one uh, sheep. It's not pretty, but he's got a part of his eye eaten, I think. Um, so I'm just, well, I've put him on his own, so he's on some. Well, so he's a bit safer, really. From, so he, if he can't see the others coming, and um, they might knock him over or something. But you can see it's really. It's quite hard to video. I think it's just been eaten by something. It's quite a big sheep to have had part of his eye eaten out like um, In fairness to him, he's eating quite well. Um, but I'm going to give him some antibiotics anyway because that is kind of ripe for infection. So I'll just give him a little dose of pen strep. Well, I say a little dose, the right dose for him. Um, you see, he doesn't seem bothered. Um, eating you can see he's really not he doesn't seem bothered by it so we'll see how he gets on 
Like I say, if he wasn't eating, I'd be quite concerned, but he seems pretty happy with, just, with his lot, really, just quite happily potching around. I'm pretty sure it's probably some sort of bird. Can't be sure, so obviously I didn't see it happen. So we just put them in the orchard. We walk through it a lot on the way to the pigs and well, some of the pigs and some of the other sheep. Um, so he's got a fair bit of space. So this is Boris. Uh, he's a Shetland ram that we've bred. It's the first time we've ever used him. Um, We've got one ewe at the moment. We will probably have another one um, in the roof. But she's on her own at the moment just until the feet get better. So it's just in a smallish um, section of grass with an electric fence to stop me and some trees that we planted a couple of years ago. Let's see it's down there. advantages of grass-fed meat is they kind of look after themselves a lot of the time. See they're out on six inch high grass I guess. So this will, this will last them quite a while now because there's only a couple of them. Right so we've got a gap here sort of underneath the fence going through a drainage ditch Ronnie's demonstrating so Ronnie is a dog so he can kind of go there but it also means those sheep could get out um, so we did have these hurdles in the way so we had two kind of in a V shape but we actually need to use the hurdles now for something else there you go there's another perfect example of why we need to fix this um, so we've got this piece of off-cut mesh that we had at work so we're going to try to just tie this into the fence. You see it's kind of in the drainage ditch, so it, isn't, it is a bit awkward. Just get it down as close to the ground as you can. Yeah, we'll still probably need a bit. We may put those bits of wood in there in the short term. It's, it's like a second temporary fix on the problem, but... We did a temporary fix a couple of years ago with the hurdles, but we do need the hurdles now, we're a bit desperate for them. It's just using one of these wire ties. Slightly more permanent than the string, but still fairly temporary really. Just for tying up bags. So again, I use it at work, for tying up bags of sand and stuff. Um, as long as you don't over tighten them, they're pretty good. If you over tighten them, they can snap. And then that hurts if they hit you. That's it, Reg, thank you. Come on, Reg, boys. Come on. Ronnie, Reggie. Reg, Reggie, come on. Good boy, Reg. Ronnie. Ron. Come here, boy. No, Ronnie. Good boy. So we'll just put these few bits of wood in it now, just in case the sheep get out of it. Although it's, these sheep are adults, so they wouldn't. The lambs would. Yeah. See, we let our dogs in the field with the sheep, but our dogs are stockbroken, so it's a bit different. We wouldn't like to see other people's untrained dogs in a field with our sheep. See, Apollo is actually smelling the air at the moment, if you look at him. He might be about to do a bit of work. This, that's Apollo, he's one of our rams. He is with Winter Rose and Blackbird. So again, only two ewes. Um, so we have four rams that we're using this year, which is quite unusual really for, we've only got about, I think we've got 57 ewes. Seven ewes, I think, um, and we run four rams, which by most people's standards is pretty excessive. But it does mean we can breed unrelated pedigree sheep in several different breeds, which is really quite nice. So 
So just grabbing a couple of rocks to fill this gap properly. We've got um, different blends than what we've seen before. It's called Flockmaster, so it's a CCF blend, which the local farmers come up for us. It's got a lot of peas and beans. Um, it's got some wheat feed, which are the big pellets, which we quite often have in our blends. Uh, it's got some barley. Uh, I think there's a bit of distillers in it, but it's a really nice, kind of natural, old fashioned blend with all the. So it's got peas and beans for the protein, which you can see the pea and a bean. Um, which is a lot more up our street than the soya that a lot of people use on the intensive system. So although we do feed a bit, we try to feed as natural a diet as possible. So we like our sheep to be bucket trained. Um, just because the management's a lot easier, you can see we just move them easily then without a pen. And although, well, we don't have a sheep dog, but you can see we've got, we've got a couple of um, border terriers running around. But if the sheep run up to us and eat out of our hands, like this one is doing, life is so much easier for us to just move sheep around than it is if we've got to fight them to move them around all the time. Well, not fight them, obviously, but like chase them around. It's just, it's, it's just kind of hard work, really. It's nice to make them up to us. It makes life a lot easier. Like I say, there's not... There's not um, like you've got a really traditional British protein source in this, which is great. <laughs> 